everyone and welcome to another episode of The Exhausted Teacher, um, a vlog by Mrs. Mactivity, or in my case Heather from Mrs. Mactivity. Um, so this is episode three, so you can watch the previous two episodes on YouTube um, or on Instagram or on, on our Instagram TV page as well. So um, the last two episodes are talking a lot about sort of teaching and how difficult it is and the sort of strategies you can use in your everyday life to make your life a bit easier. But I've been getting a lot of messages from people off the back of those videos about alternative careers for teachers. So that's what this um, episode is about today, mainly on my own experience of being a teacher. So just a little bit about me and my past experience. So I was a teacher for about 10 years. Um, I taught in um, Japan, first of all, then I taught in Madrid, Spain, and then I got a job in Yorkshire as a teacher, taught in three different schools, taught across the whole primary age range, um, you know, good, bad experiences, etc., etc. Usual teaching experience sort of life, really. Um, then when my second son was born, as I said in the first podcast, I find it really, really difficult Um I think that was probably around the time things started to get really tough in schools and they were all already pretty tough anyway. Um, and I started to find things really difficult, you know, dropping the kids off really early in the morning, staying late for staff meetings, all the marking, scrutiny, the inspections, all of that stuff just started to really get on top of me. Um, and I did go to part time and even with part time hours, I found it just incredibly difficult. I was sort of very teary and emotional just because I was so tired, I think, more than anything. Whether I'd have coped better without the children, I probably would have done. Um, but I know for a lot of mums and dads as well, you know, when you have kids and they come along, everything changes and your priorities change. Um, and that cer certainly was the case for us. And, you know, I was in a fortunate position that um, I was able to give up teaching and do something different. But I've done lots of jobs since I've left teaching. Um, I just wanted to give you some um, practical strategies and ideas for what you can do if you at the, at the end of your tether you can't do it anymore or you just want a little break for a while it's fine you can do that you don't have to carry on with something if you're miserable with it there's absolutely no rule that says just because you train as a teacher you have to be a teacher forever you know people have five or six careers times have changed haven't they i guess the one thing to think about is well two things are the pension you'll never probably never get as good a pension again and the holidays it's a bit of a shocker when you go from sort of teaching to private sector work and you only get like four, five weeks holiday a year. But the thing that I found is I don't need the holidays as much because I'm not so exhausted and I can do things in the week and at the weekend with my kids and friends and hobbies and whatnot that I couldn't do before. So I don't need as much time off and I don't get as ill either. Um, I was constantly ill when I was a teacher, sore throats all the time. It just gets you down, it wears you down, doesn't it? And I hardly ever become ill now, which is brilliant considering I have three kids. So I've just written down, in fact, there's a blog post on the site you can read if you want, if you prefer to read, but I just thought people like videos, don't they? So um, I'm just going to explain some of the things that I've done and that have worked for, for me personally. Um, so the first thing to remember is people want to know what you think. So as a teacher, you've got loads of transferable skills, not just within the education sector, but just generally. And people are interested so employers are interested in your experiences as a teacher what it's like you know time management skills organizational skills those are really really important transferable skills don't downplay them um, the other thing i found is that when i've employed teachers um, either in my team or in my business teachers are actually awesome employees they work really hard they go above and beyond loads of goodwill they're nice people they want to do the right thing so those are all things in your favour, okay? So don't be thinking that you, just because you're a teacher, you that's all you can do. That is not the case, okay? There's lots and lots of things you can do. So here's what I did. So I went along to a lot of these trade shows, so the education trade shows. So you've got BET, the Education Show, Child Care Expo, and there are loads of exhibitors there who have businesses related to education. Obviously, that's why they're there. So what I would do, I'd go along early in the morning when it's not really busy or later on in the afternoon when it's quieter, and go and talk to people, take a CV, take a card, whatever, and be willing to talk about what you can do for their business. So do some research, see who's going to be there, go on the, you know, the website of Child Care Expo, whatever, and pinpoint who you want to talk to. And sort of go along and, and have an, a nice conversation, but then just throw in that you're looking for work, you're an experienced teacher, or even if you're not an experienced teacher, and what you can do for their business, what sort of gaps you can see they could fill that you could help them with. So I know personally, I'm always looking for people who've got, you know, who've got really good ideas and really like passionate and things like that. So go along, be yourself, be passionate and just sell yourself, you know, in a good way. Um, 
uh, loads of, there's quite a few educational marketing companies. So this is a bit of a different type of job because it's very kind of like um, commercially focused and they have, you know, the deadlines are quite strict, but there's Hopscotch in London, National Schools Partnership also in London, but I know that you can do work from home roles for them. They work with sort of big companies like BP and stuff like that. And they're always looking for teachers to work with who can create like lesson plans and educational content. Don't be afraid to just email them your CV or email them and ask them, you know, to sell your skills again. Like if you're a STEM specialist, early year specialist, whatever, what you can add. Don't just email in saying, I'm a teacher and, you know, be all like sorry for yourself. You want to be telling them what you can do for them and why they need you because people are busy and they don't want to have to sift through your CV. You know, be really honest and direct and follow up with a phone call. You know, you, sometimes you've got to be pushy, haven't you? Right, teaching blog. So there's lots of really good sites out there that started out with a teaching blog. So Grammasaurus started out like that. The Literacy Shared started out like that. Um, sharing your ideas as a teacher and then work from there. So you'll get a following, you know, set up a Facebook page, whatever, Twitter account, start to interact with people. And then as you get a following, people will want to hear what you've got to say. But really, this needs to be something that you're really specialist, a specialist in, um, you know, things like EAL or, I don't know, um, maths mastery, something that's really topical at the moment. Um, I don't know, Ofsted deep dive, something like, like that something people want to read about pain points, something that's going to save people time and help them out. Um, and then from the back of that, you know, you can start creating your own resources like I have, uh, get, get a test shop, start selling content on there, link to your test shop from your blog and, you know, try to alert your followers to what you're doing. But again, it's about finding a niche, something you're really passionate about. So just have a think about that. Um, and if you're not sure, ask a friend what they think about you, because sometimes I think we're not so hot on knowing what what we're good at and i think our friends sometimes can be really great at that helping out with that um educational publishers so there's harper collins there's rm there is people like rising stars and other companies like tts ypo see what vacancies they have if they don't have any vacancies on the website send them an email go on linkedin find who the recruitment person is for that for that business um, they always need teachers and obviously it's easier, usually easy if you're closer to London or not, isn't the case for YPO and for TCS because they're in the north of England, but you know, see who's out there, get in touch with them, network, email them, whatever, um, interact with them on Twitter, find out however you can help them. You know, it's all about how can you help them rather than how can they help you. Um, other one, training. So as a teacher, you'll be actually really surprised how difficult training can be. If you're a teacher, you don't think about it because you do it all the time. So the police have, you know, training departments, the NHS does, um, large companies like HBOS, NatWest, banks, ASDA, whatever. Whoever's nearest to you in your area, see what jobs they've got in training and development because that's something you could definitely do. Again, it's about trying to sell your skills rather than trying to kind of loosely apply for jobs be specific about what you've done that can you can kind of twist it to make it fit that job um become a pgc tutor there's always colleges and universities that are looking for pgc tutors again just look on the job section of those websites um see what friends you've got connections all that kind of thing connect with people through linkedin um, again, you can go to events as well because often have the the universities go to these sort of student events and things like that. Go along, have a chat. Um, ah, if you are in early years, you can set up some kind of franchise, run sort of phonics classes, or join a franchise, buy a franchise. Quite expensive though. Um, there's loads and loads of things you can do: messy play, rhythm and rhyme, that kind of thing, singing. And word will spread. I guess it's just the setup costs are quite high for that and it can be difficult to make money what with room hire costs and things like that. But it's definitely something to consider maybe with a friend. Tutoring. Become a private tutor. Uh, set, set up on your own or join a business local to you. I'm sure there are tutoring businesses near you. But the only thing with that is it's something usually after hours. So if you've got your own kids, maybe you won't work quite so well unless they're a bit older. Um, and the weekend as well. Sats marking. Not something I've ever done, but I know people make some money from it. Don't know how much anyone who's done that, if you could comment on this um, thread, that'd be great to see how much money you can make from that. Um, again, make your own resources on TESS, on TPT. You can use platforms like Canva to make the resources and then change them to um, PDFs. Um, I find that very useful myself. 
there are your own local council so sometimes they have jobs i know they don't have like the specialist teachers like they used to do but certainly the autism service have jobs in my area anyway that are for teachers and other jobs as well so just check out your council website there's always things going on there um nvq assessing um fe work as well so that's something you can cons you could consider i know an ex-colleague of mine does that now um so again look at your local fe college website for vacancies um work for museums apparently someone did message me about this so it was quite poorly paid but i guess so you're going to you got to sort of start somewhere haven't you so a lot of them run sort of ask teachers to run workshops and uh, write content for children that visit visiting classes something to look at um just google education companies in your area okay and see what comes up because i actually found out that in my area there's a whiteboard company that are looking for teachers and i would never have known if i hadn't googled it so that's something to look at um teach abroad this is something I did. You can make a, a decent living from that. You have the respect that you don't necessarily get here. And particularly the money to be made in places like, like you know, Middle East. Uh, I personally taught in Japan. It was quite well paid. Um, I know China is also quite well paid. But you just got to be careful who you work for because there are unscrupulous schools out there that just don't pay you. You just end up not getting paid and they don't treat you very well either. Um, so just be careful and ask for asking, you know, the Facebook groups if anyone has a recommendation, because that's always good to hear from someone else. Um, hospital teaching, again, looking on NHS website, see what see what they've got. Something I know that's very interesting to do um, and obviously good for work life balance as well. Graduate scheme. So you don't necessarily have to do something related to education. Look at your local businesses, large businesses. I don't think there's an age limit on these, you know, join a graduate scheme, why not? Something that's got a really, really good training program. You'll really stand out, honestly, you will from recent graduates if you've got teaching experience. So like in my area, there's Asda, a really big employer, um, UCAR, a really big employer, um, Yorkshire Building Society, a big employer. There's, there's In every area, there'll be a big employer. Just see what graduate opportunities they have. Um, doesn't need to be a graduate scheme necessarily. It could be, you know, something to totally different. Just see what they've got available retrain so this is something you, you'll have to do in your spare time first so whether you want to be a jewelry designer you know an acupuncturist whatever do it in your spare time first and then as you sort of qualify then you can make this make that sort of leap to leave teaching it is stressful leaving teaching i found it really really stressful um but if it's something you really enjoy and you ask just you've had enough then definitely worth doing um, there's a company called did teach they actually specifically recruit ex-teachers for roles so that's definitely worth looking at as well if you just google did teach um they've got a really good website a lot of it is in the south of england unfortunately but um worth a look definitely now i haven't included jobs that i believe are poultry have poultry wages um because i believe that as a teacher it's not just about not just about the fact that all right you don't have a class responsibility anymore it's not the same job i kind of believe that you are using all your years of experience to you know especially especially if it's within the same education sphere it's different if you go into a totally different market and um, like finance or something but i believe that you should be paid for your time it's sort of commensurate with a, a teacher's pay i get that you're going to lose, lose the terms and conditions because that's just how it is but um yeah i haven't included those jobs i hope that isn't offensive to anyone there you go uh so those are my thoughts on leaving teaching some potential job ideas out there for you hope that's helpful speak soon bye